Really? Mm -hmm. Well, good morning, church. Time is drawing nigh. Uh, time for Sunday school. First of all, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Thank you, Saint. And I pray that you have many, many more Mother Day. Thank you. Amen. 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 Because I know that the good Lord has been good to you because he's been good to me. Amen. Amen. I want y'all to join in with me in singing. We're going to do one stanza of Pass Me Now to Jump to Save You. And we're going to we're gonna have to make sure the teacher has as much time as possible for the lesson. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to try to join in with me singing Pass Me Now. Pass me now, O gentle Savior. Oh, hear my own. should be coming from Matthew chapter 3 beginning at verse 13 13 through 17 chapter 3 verses 13 through 17 when you have it say amen amen, amen. Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and come thou to me. And Jesus answered, saying unto him, Suffer it to be so, not, for thus is he cometh us to, fu to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, and who I am well pleased. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for enabling us to be able to be in the house of the Lord just one more time, Lord God. Lord, we want to thank you for this Mother's Day, Lord God, and we pray that every mother is, we know every mother is love because, Lord God, they love, their love is like your love, Lord God, and for that we just want to say thank you. Now, Lord God, as we get into our Sunday school lesson, touch the teacher, Lord God. Let it be less of her, Lord God, that she can expound on, on your word, that we can have the ear to listen and, and sink the words into our hearts, Lord God. And Lord, touch our pastor wherever he may be, Lord God. Touch the sick and shed in, Lord God. Touch our first lady. 
touch the leadership of St. Simon Baptist yes. Church. And Lord God, just touch us that we can continue to do your work, Lord God. Yes. And so you can tell us, well, please, my good and faithful servant. Yes. And Lord, forgive us whatever sins that we've committed, Lord, because we're striving every day to make it into thy kingdom. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. 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 Now the title of our lesson is The Son Greater Than Angels. And the lesson text is Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 9. And related scriptures is Matthew 3, 13, 17, and Hebrew uh, chapter 1, 13, 1, chapter 1, uh, verse 13, and then it jumps to uh, chapter 2 and uh, verse 9. And uh, I'm going to I'm, I'm just going to get on out the way and let our teacher come so she can have as much time as possible for the class. Amen. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's give our teacher a hand. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and as the deacon has said already, it's Mother's Day. Amen. And um, sometimes as mothers, at some point in time, we may have to be reminded that children are a gift from God. Amen? Amen. 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 We have to be reminded every now and then. <laughs> sometimes it's a, you know, a little challenging. Uh, but we have to stand on God's word and uh, thank God for another day. Um, the title for the quarter is Jesus is God. And I'm not a songstress, but I like music. And, you know, I know a lot of songs. And one song that comes to mind is Everybody Ought to Know Who Jesus Is. I don't know if you all are familiar with it. Yes. You know, just, just a few voices, uh, verses. But everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And even as we search for, you know, church homes or we fellowship, it's important to know what that body believes. You know, you don't want to hook up with somebody, you know, you really don't know what that foundation is and, and what they're teaching. So, um, today's lesson, uh, as the superintendent has said, the title is The Sun Greater Than Angels. The writer of the book of Hebrews quotes from the Old Testament repeatedly in demonstrating Christ's greatness in comparison to angels. This audience of first century Jewish Christians had developed an imbalanced belief in angels and their roles. Christ's Lordship is affirmed without disrespect to God's value and angelic messengers. You know, again, you've got a group of people that believe that you have to go through angels to get to God. And <laughs> that was never true. And it's certainly not true uh, at this point in time. So we're going to go ahead and get into our verses. I'm going to ask someone to read, please, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and we'll get into our discussion. Amen. Hebrews 1, verse 1. Amen. It says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he also, uh, excuse me, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. 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 God has used many approaches to send his message to people in the Old Testament times. He spoke to Isaiah in visions, Isaiah chapter 6, to Jacob in a dream, Genesis 28, 10 through 22, and Abraham and Moses personally. Now he has revealed himself by speaking through his son, Jesus Christ. So, uh, through the prophet, God was able to communicate instructions and messages to his people. And there have been some great prophets. Amen? 
Um, our, our, in our lesson, there's a reference to a couple of them. Let me back up here. Go to a couple of def definitions first. Sundry times means God spoke in many portions, given his message in fragments. Divers manners refers to the way God spoke through a variety of avenues, such as people, visions, dreams, incidents, and object lessons. An examination of men such as Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah reveals this. So again, for Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, they're considered major prophets. Had a lot to say. Uh, does not make them any more important than, than the minor prophets. But they had a lot to say and they were used in, um, in mighty ways. And for example, Ezekiel was commanded to lie on his left side for 390 days to symbolize the guilt of the house of Israel. I can't even imagine. <laughs> can't even imagine. Can't even you know, lie on my left side through the night. Uh, less more than 390 days. Isaiah predicted the coming of the Messiah and was sawed in half eventually. Jeremiah is referred to as the weeping prophet. His life was marked by opposition, imprisonment, and personal struggles. Jeremiah's message, message were prophecies of impending divine judgment, forewarning of the nation's idolatry, social injustices, and moral decay. So, you know, we have men that have uh, always carried God's message. And always, you know, there was always somebody to bring God's people into check whenever they, whenever they got out of line. So, you know, the prophets were extremely important uh, back then. But there's nobody greater than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And again, you know, God is sending messages through these people, but it wasn't until Jesus Christ was incarnate that he actually revealed himself to his people. Uh, we know that Jesus has always been referenced and always been working from the beginning of time through God's creation. He didn't just show up when Mary gave birth. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 He did not show up, just show up when Mary gave birth. So in the beginning, uh, he was there through the creation, involved in the creation. Okay. We're going to look at verses 4 through 9. And if someone would read those verses. <laughs> and being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than, than that. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I would be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he said, who make his, his angel spirit and his ministers a flame of fire. Be unto the son, he said, thy throne, O God, it's for every, forever and ever. A scorp, uh, scorp, I can't pronounce that. Scepter. Scepter, I couldn't get it out. Uh, righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Amen. 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 And okay, what do we know about angels? God's messengers, God's um, creation, uh, heavenly host, very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and we have uh, a certain um, thought about what they look like, which is somewhat totally bored to what they actually look like. Amen. And they Amen. all don't look like the ones we hang on our Christmas tree. Right. You know, Ezekiel. <laughs> some got four faces, some got a bunch of eyes all around them. Mm -hmm. You know, so very powerful being, but they're not to be worshipped. And yeah. like you said in the beginning, you know, some, you know, believe that you are to worship angels. Mm -hmm. Some do. Mm -hmm. to this day. They are not to be worshipped. And they, they, they work on our behalf. Amen. They, they do God, they do, the angels do God's work. They do whatever, God. he, whatever he need them to do, they will do it. Amen. They are servants. They are servants. They do God's work, messengers. And um, they work for us too. Yeah. Psalms 91, uh, 11 through 16, says he gives his, his angels charge over us. Right. Amen, and we've repeated that a lot during during the temp uh, the uh, pandemic. But you know, they're God's creation. Uh, so you know, how can we put the creature above the Creator? Right. Okay. We can't. We can't. And we're warned about you know worshiping. You know, we should have no other God before our God. Jesus' superiority to angels. The superior name that was given to Jesus is Son of God. The name given to him by his Father is greater than names and titles of angels. And the, the three angels that I'm referencing uh, is Michael, which is known as the war angel, Raphael, which is the guardian angel, and Gabriel, which is the messenger angel. And there was an incident here I guess a week or so ago, I don't know if you all saw it, where this young man pointed a gun at the preacher. Yeah, yeah. In the service, just walked yeah. right in front of the preacher, pointed a gun, and not only did he point it, he pulled the trigger, and the gun jammed. And you know, people are saying that you know there were angels present to protect him, and maybe so. But we know God was involved. Amen. We know God did it. Right. You know. By, by hair, whatever means God did it. So, you know, we thank God for the roles of angels, um, you know, and we, we can, you know, pray for protection, uh, you know, for angels to, to protect us according to God's word. But they are nowhere near more important, nobody is more important than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. What he did for us, nobody could do. Nobody could do. And, um, you know, the sacrifices have been going on over the years with animals. And it just got to a point where sin was so out of control that Jesus had to come down from heaven and sacrifice his own life. Yes, sir. Now, she got her hand up. Yes, ma'am. Another uh, talk of. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was, look, I was going to read the Bible study. We always talk about everything there. But is that how angels work does God actually send angels for protection or do we just pray for protection and, and God assigns an angel to do certain things um, if, if needed I'm not understanding how angels work because I hear a lot of things about angels mm -hmm. And, you know, like people, they're in an accident, you know, they're laying there, they're really hurt. And um, they say someone comes and sits with them and, you know, is with them the whole time until, you know, someone comes to help them. And then they're asking for, where's this person? Where's that person that sat with me? And nobody's like, we didn't see anybody like that. Is that how God sends his angels or for protection or how, I, I just don't understand angels and how they work exactly. Well, I will give my response them. and then we will defer to the professor. Okay. <laughs> They're available. The words, let's go to Psalms 91. Verse 11 through 16. And if you would read that when you get there. And 
anybody else can chime in, you know, if you want to. Nine, but I, 91. Mm -hmm, verses 11 through 16. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all, the, in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adders, the youngest, the young lion and the dragons. Thou shalt trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So they're available. For help. God uses them in that particular situation would be my answer. <clears throat> Professor? <laughs> Alright, that's the, uh, how God uh, basically gives him commands to do this or to do that, mm. right? But the Bible tells us uh, quite a few things. One, of course, Psalms 91, when you go over back into John and you go over to chapter 4, when the devil is talking to you know Jesus, trying to get him to do certain things, uh, the devil actually quotes from this verse and trying to get Jesus to jump and hurt himself. Right? Don't we know that the devil is still an angel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that the Lord has um, told us to be careful how we interact with one another, yes. because we might be interacting with angels mm -hmm. unawares. Mm -hmm. And so when you say, and I've experienced, and other people experience, when all of a sudden somebody comes, you don't know, they don't know you, they do a deed or do something, help you, save you, but there is yet no trace, no name, nobody know who they are, none of that. Those could be angels. What the Lord has provided for us, as 91 is saying, he's given them charge, meaning care, to care for each and every one of us. And so we might not understand who they are at the time that they come, but we know that they talk to Mary at the tomb. We know in the book of Revelations that John spoke to one, and when he started to worship that angel, that angel told him, no, 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 mm -hmm. don't do that. You know, I'm a servant of God, basically. I'm yeah. paraphrasing that part, but I'm a servant just like you are. And so when we get into Revelations, we're going to see that those angels have just been given, you know, again, charge, meaning care, over each and every one of us. How God tells them to do what and when, we ain't privy to that. We just know that they're not idle. Mm -hmm. They're actually doing something on our behalf. And sometimes, um, sometimes we can recognize it, sometimes we can't. But, again, the beginning of the lesson is simply this. Sometimes we worship things that we deem to be greater mm -hmm. than us, and we lift things up, people, uh, all kinds of things. But an angel is basically nothing more than a caregiver that God has provided for us and his needs. His needs first. Mm -hmm. We pray to him, Lord, I need help with this, that, that, and the other. I'm going to say it like this. God is omnipresent, meaning he everywhere. Right. But his angels come and they minister like they did in chapter 4 the next chapter John chapter 4 after Jesus was tempted he was hungry the angels came and ministered meaning brought him food mm -hmm. right so when people speak so up God, so speak God, up just a little bit so we can hear on that I'm sorry mm -hmm. so God has his angels so when people say that someone died and they're, that's their guardian angel that's not necessarily because you don't know when someone dies, you don't know whether they went to heaven or not. You know, you don't know what. Right, it's not like you can actually so, see them all the time. Yeah. No, it's like because you hear people when um, someone dies and they say, "Oh, you know, they're now my guardian angel." That's not necessarily 
how angels work, right? Because God's angels were already there. Right, a, a guardian angel in that term, and we're going to speed it up. <laughs> no, a a guardian me. angel in that term is an angel that has charge over you. Mm -hmm. Meaning, the Lord has given him charge over you. He is your guardian angel, yeah. right, per se. But when somebody is like dying, how are you doing, When somebody is dying, how are you doing? I'm good. Now, what the Lord tells us that the soul, the spirit, is going to be turned to him. We kind of add, you know, well, when so-and-so died, I saw the angel grab him or her by the whatever, whatever, and, you know, we kind of add a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. If we just stick with what the Bible says, is that he's giving angels charge of us, meaning guardian angels. We're not to worship them, but they are servants, just like we are, to do God's will. Mm -hmm. We just got this. We, we, miss, say, yeah, yeah, we, we say a lot of stuff okay. that sounds good yeah. and that may make us feel good, right. but you know, there's no scripture to, to back, back it up. up. It just sounds good, we've heard it over the years, and it makes us feel good. But it's not necessarily biblical. Okay. And we do a lot of those things like that. Yeah, that's why I was asking because we've been talking about a lot of that in like Bible study, how, you know, we say things, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily scripture. So I just wanted to get clarity on angels because I've never really understood about angels. Mm -hmm. Well, they're real. Okay. They're well, real, I knew they were busy. real, but I didn't mm -hmm. understand how necessarily, I guess, they work or how God uses them mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, I guess that's and they're very important because uh, there's another scripture that says, you know, God made us a little lower than the angels. So, you know, in the grand scheme of thing, in the hierarchy, they're up there pretty high. Yeah. You know, they're they're up there pretty high. Because I knew they were real, like, the angel appeared to Mary. Mm -hmm. The angel appeared to Joseph. So I know angels are real. Mm -hmm. I just kind of just didn't understand how people say, you know, my guardian angel, how do you know that was your guardian angel? Mm -hmm. It could have been somebody else, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It could have been, you know, somebody else who was a guardian angel. How do you know that? So mm -hmm. I was just saying, just understanding that that's, you know, just something people say. Mm -hmm. So, gotcha. Amen. Any other comments before we, we, we move further? Speaking of angels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we did mention earlier that false teachers in many churches taught that God could be approached only through angels. Instead of worshiping God directly, followers were worshiping angels. And we know, you know, there's no way to get to God but through Jesus Christ. Amen. No other way. That's right. As good as the angels are, as great a job as they do, there's no other way. And again, as we said, uh, said earlier, when you sit under teaching or when you, you know, decide to align yourself with the fellowship, you better know what they believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You better be sure about Amen. what they believe. Uh, because as the early discussion, we have heard so many things over the years that are just folk tales and, you know, yeah. just sound good and make you feel good, but no scriptural basis whatsoever. No scriptural basis. So, um, you go back to... Eight. It says, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with oil of gladness above their fe fellows. Uh, the name of Jesus is above every name. Every name. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, you know, whatever, whatever name you want to put out there. Yeah. The name of Jesus is greater than every name. Mm -hmm. And we know where he is right now. We know what he did. Uh, we know the sacrifice that he made. And we know that he has been exalted. Mm -hmm. uh, the lesson talks about being ex exalted. And that word exalted means placed at a high or powerful level, held in high regard, 
to lift up, to be or become high. So he has been exalted. He is in a high place. He is seated at the right hand of God, forever making intercessions for our pitiful little oh, selves. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Forever yeah. pleading our case. Yeah. Yeah. I saw what you did, uh, Mother Nettie Davis. She didn't. She, God, she, she didn't mean it. <laughs> I got her, I got her, I got her. That's what intercession does. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's pleading our case. Yeah. And he is the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. He is God in the flesh. Yes, he is. Amen. Yeah. And he is, not was. Mm -hmm. He Thanks. is mm -hmm. God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And he is our mighty redeemer. He is our high priest. Mm -hmm. And there's no one greater than our God. Song said, I searched all over. Couldn't find, find nobody. Couldn't find nobody. Search high and low. Yeah. Still couldn't Still find could nobody. Find nobody. My God. nobody greater. Yeah. Nobody greater. Oh nobody God. greater. Nobody greater. Yes. Nobody greater oh than yes. our God. Not the yes. angels, not the prophets, yeah. not the priests. Yeah. Thank God for all the work that was done. He's all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. He is all of that yes, wrapped up in one. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What was that? He's Alpha and Omega. He's Alpha and Omega. Amen. The beginning and the end. He's been there from the beginning, and he'll be there until the end. He'll be there eternally on his throne. Amen. And we thank God this morning. Um, for me, it was not a whole, whole lot. You know, the lessons are rich. Uh, but as far as the comparisons, there's, there's just no comparison. You know, and, and if we want to go another direction, it's just out of total ignorance. Mm -hmm. You can't work, you know. The, you can't worship the crea uh, the creature. Can't you can't worship the creature more than the creator? Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. That's just crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He's the creator of all things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Creator of all things. In the beginning, God. Yeah. Amen. He's the creator of the angels, and in the beginning, God. So you know, to go another direction is just. It's just insane. Yeah. It's just insane. Yes, ma'am. I think one of the things we, we have done, we we have taken up our relationship with Jesus from the cross. Not taken in, in consideration of his preeminence. Mm -hmm. He always, you know, you read Genesis one and one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, John one and one. Mm -hmm. He was he was there. He was God was speaking the word and he was making it happen. Right. And and I think if we can get past our knowledge of the cross, which which is crucial critical in our foundation. Mm -hmm. But if we don't understand clearly what you were talking about, he was always there. Always. There was never a time when he was not. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the thing that the pivotal pointing here is when he made when, when the, the crucifixion was, was done and he went back to the Father. And when we read about him in Revelation 1 and 1, that's, that's, that's the Jesus. Right. That's the one that, that we don't really know. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting to know him in a better way than I've ever known him in my life. Mm -hmm. that, that he was he was there then, but when he went through the uh, crucifixion process, then God put him in charge of everything. Okay. He's the fullness of the Godhead. Yes. And when we pray to God, we have to pray to God in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about, you know, how we have not been taught a lot of things. And these are some of the things we just getting caught up on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to his preeminence. Amen. Yeah, in his incarnation where he became flesh and you know, we read about how he sinned not, you know. Well he, he he was in the flesh and he cried and he was hungry and it was all of that, but he didn't have the sin nature that we we came Amen. in here mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. because the Holy Ghost was his father. Amen. So Amen. he didn't have that that sin nature that we have that was passed on to us. Mm -hmm. He never had that sin nature. So he's always been all powerful, mm -hmm. and um, I'm excited. Thank you very much. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Even um, as we yeah, look at, I believe it's Isaiah chapter six, mm -hmm. 
if you would go there. And I think that's where Isaiah describes that vision that he saw that changed him. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring my Bible up here. Where he talks about in the year that King Uzziah died, yeah. I also saw the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Is that Isaiah 6? Isaiah 6. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If someone would read that. In the year the king Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, mm -hmm. high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Mm -hmm. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings mm -hmm. with twine. He covered his face, mm -hmm. and with twine he covered his feet, mm -hmm. and with twine he, he did fly. Yeah. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Mm -hmm. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with oh smoke. My God, yes. Then I say, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the serpents, or seraphims, unto me, excuse me, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hands, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Mm -hmm. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, mm -hmm. this has touched thy lips, yes. and thy iniquities is taken away, mm -hmm. and thy sin yes. purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, mm -hmm. Whom shall I send, yes. and who will go mm -hmm. for us? Right now. Then said I, yeah. I am, mm -hmm. I I, I, excuse me, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive it not. Make the heart of this people flat, fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and convert and be healed. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lord, how long? Mm -hmm. And he answered, until the cities yeah. be wasted without inhabitants, mm -hmm. and the house without man, and the land be utterly desolated. Mm -hmm. And the Lord have removed men from away, mm -hmm. and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Mm -hmm. But yet in it, shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a tail tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy, shall seek, uh, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Yeah. Amen. That's Amen. The, yeah. And that's the words of the eagle-eyed prophet. Yeah. The eagle-eyed prophet. <laughs> the eagle eye yeah. see far into the future. Yeah. And who is the Lord of hosts? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, who is the King of glory? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, the Lord mighty in battle. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we just thank God this morning for the lesson. And, you know, we want to leave here this morning sure that there's nobody greater than our God. There's nobody greater than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, you know, some of the things that we've done. Um, Deacon mentioned about, you know, these cute little angel pictures that we come up with and, mm -hmm. you know, put them on the wall and hang them on the Christmas tree and all that good stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, the Bible doesn't bear out some of this stuff that we, that we put, that we create mm -hmm. and worship. Amen. So, uh, as we learn better, we do better. But we need to leave here this morning sure that there's nobody greater than our God. Nobody. Yes, really. Amen? Yeah. Do we have any other comments? Hey, my sister, just on that scripture that we just read, uh, one of the amazing things is that was, you know, before Isaiah had that dream, 
Isaiah had no idea that his lips were not clean. Oh, right. he, had no idea. Mm -hmm. he had no idea Absolutely. that his lips were not clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And only until yeah. the till the cold touched his lip mm -hmm. could he even hear God call. Yeah. Because right. before he couldn't even hear God call him because oh he was God. sinful. Mm -hmm. oh until he got clean. Mm -hmm. Then that was the only way that he could really hear what yeah. God was saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the same with us. We, we, we got to pray. Mm -hmm. Stay yeah. prayed up because if we're in that sinful mode, how can we hear what God is trying to tell we us? Mm -hmm. We cannot hear. We cannot hear. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like you said, you know, his lips were unclean. He said, I dwell, dwell among the people. Yeah. Everybody was unclean. Everybody was unclean. Everybody was unclean. Everybody was unclean. Saying all kinds of stuff and doing all kinds of stuff. You know, so we, we that encounter with Christ mm -hmm. changes your life. Yeah. It changes your life. Yeah. A real encounter. You'll never be the same. Yeah. Amen. You will never be yeah. the same. Yeah. And and you yeah. you know, you will have to change some of your associations. Yeah. You know your 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 uh, conversation will change. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, mm -hmm. and there's a, a major change that takes place in your life because of this man, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, yeah. the Son of the Living God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He's a, he's as close to God as as anybody's ever seen. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. the Bible says nobody's ever seen God. Mm -hmm. But here's Jesus Christ, yeah. God in the flesh. Yeah, Amen. Flesh. What a privilege. Yeah. You know, what a, what a privilege, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to to have him uh, interceding on our behalf. What a privilege to have him sacrifice his life for little old me. Mm -hmm. What a privilege. Yeah. Amen. We talk about Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah. God sacrificed his son. Uh -huh. It ain't Father's Day, but yeah. you know, God sacrificed his son, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can have eternal life. And we thank God this morning. Yeah. We thank God this morning, and we are, uh, with a surety, know that we have no business worshiping anybody or anything Amen. above our Creator. Amen. Amen. Amen? That's all I have this morning. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> but y'all know how Jesus. Y'all know how Jesus. He 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 was he carried a cross up the Calvary, mm -hmm. and when he carried that cross up the Calvary, he was that cross had a had sin on it. It had your sin, my sin, had everybody's sin on it. Mm -hmm. But you know when when they got him up to Calvary, they put nails in his hands, they put nails in his feet, they put. A thorns on his head, they pierced him in his side, but he died. Yeah. He died. But you know what? Uh, uh, there was good news behind that because he rose on that third day. Amen. And church, they said to him that the Bible said when he rose, he rose with all power in his hand. Mm -hmm. All power. So we know that Jesus has all power when he rose on that third day. Why can't we go to him? Why can't we call him? Call his name because he has power in his name. So what I'm saying is say this, no matter what you're going through, no matter what situation you are in, call the name of Jesus. Yeah. We already stated that the Bible stated that the name of Jesus has power. Yes. The scriptures say he rose with all power. Mm -hmm. So if you know that and you believe that uh, today is your day, if there's one, someone here who do not know Jesus Christ in the part of their sins, this is your day. When we let's stand and sing, come to Jesus, mm -hmm. and that we pray that somebody come, Amen. that they too can see the light that Jesus shines. Come, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, 